All right, today we're going to dive into a little bit of Web3 gaming trends for 2024, what this might look like, and give you guys kind of an insight from a project lead that uh, is working in this space quite a bit. I think you'll like it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to the Tech Bath. When you look at Web3 gaming, one of the things that you have to kind of consider is what the outlook is. 2024 has been one of the years that we've looked at and said this could be a breakout year, and we've seen this across a variety of chains. If you look at this article right here, this was just talking about a few executives. This was back in December, so they were looking at the trends that would potentially be tracking here into 2024. And a couple of things uh, that I think really still present themselves as some of the biggest challenges is developers. Developers continuing to gain confidence both in some of the blockchains that they're working with, but also in kind of the tactics that they're going to market with. So that's one of the bigger uh, scenarios that play into it. And then you look at kind of this whole shift, and I'll kind of zoom in on that for you guys a little bit. The shift that really is happening right now is around decentralization and digital ownership. And this is kind of the concept of where Web3 Gaming is going, is this digital ownership, what it means for kind of these gaming experiences. And it's really kind of transitioning what was a Web2 community into now what we're seeing more and more of, especially after some of the developer conferences and some of the things we've seen at conferences around Web3 gaming is a shift into the next gener generation. So today's uh, conversation will be kind of focused in on that. Uh, today's sponsor and also on the conversation will be Miria. And Miria, we're going to break down a little bit more around the MetaRush game, a little bit about what they're doing as a project and uh, get, get a little bit deeper into Miria as a whole. So joining me today is Andrew Silbert, who is the co-founder and CTO over at Mary. Great to have you on. Hey, thanks very much, Brad. Glad to be here. Hey, Andrew, let's get into a little bit about Mary in general. Uh, if you can, give us a breakdown, some of the, the things, one, of course, that you guys are doing today. But can you talk to us a little bit about the 2024 roadmap, where you guys are going, kind of give us some insights to where you are. Uh, sure. Well, so, um, you know, 2023 was about uh, laying a lot of uh, ground, uh, sort of foundation and, and groundwork. And so 2024 really is going to be the, uh, you know, really the sort of explosion of that. So in terms of, um, so for those of you who are not as familiar with Miria, Miria, we're an L2 um, uh, uh, a gaming platform, that is to say, a, a blockchain gaming platform um, based on, uh, uh, the the Stark uh, infrastructure, but uh, which which allows us to provide um, you know very high performance, low cost transactions. So we have on the one hand we have our whole gaming platform, and on the other hand we have our developing studios. So um, we are building both a tool suite of, uh, of technologies which will allow game developers to transition from the Web two to the Web three space. So, you know, as gamers and game developers ourselves, my background personally is in games. I worked at companies, Ubisoft, EA, um, Midway, Sony, um, so a, lot of, a lot of companies over the years, Activision. And so, you know, from our perspective, we really know what uh, game developers and gamers are looking for. And so, you know, 2024 really is going to see us um, uh, elaborating and doubling down on you know what we feel is the direction of the the Web three um, gaming gaming space. Um, so that means both you know, our internal development studios uh, with games like Meta Rush that uh, you were momentarily mm -hmm. looking at, and also all of the behind the scenes SDKs and tooling uh, that are used by our developers and our partners to bring their games to uh, to life in in the blockchain space. So that's really where we're at. I mean, it is going to be a um, uh, as I said, you know, uh, 2023 was a, a lot of foundation work, and uh, 2024 is really going to see uh, a lot of ex explosion into the into the marketplace. When you you mentioned something there um, about understanding really what developers are looking for in uh, these platforms, can you expand on that a little bit? Because we've we've seen developers kind of focus in on a variety of different platforms for different reasons. What would be some of the examples that you guys are seeing around developers coming to the L2 Maria? Um, so when developers come to us, you know, there's a lot of you know indie devs, small devs, people who don't necessarily have the uh, you know, the internal um 
infrastructure to to be building smart contracts and you know navigating the regulatory uh, landscape and you know all of the compliance and things like that and so you know they it's you know a bit overwhelming to them and they you know coming from a web 2 background um you know, they really are thinking more in terms of, you know, game utility and what sort right. of workflows they're used to. So, you know, um, you know, if you consider game platforms like, um, you know, traditional web to backend game like um, PlayFab or GameSparks, where they have SDKs, which really do reflect the, uh, you know, the, the underlying architecture of games in terms of, you know, how assets and how, um, you know, when, ga when gamers accumulate uh, you know, rewards and things, uh, you know, how those workflows uh, figure into their, you know, their whole ecosystem and their whole structure, then that's the sort of thing that really informs the tooling uh, that, you know, that we've been developing here. So, um, you know, it's really, like I said, um, you know, we put ourselves in the shoes of the developer and um, can really anticipate. So, I mean, me, I, you know, I've written a tremendous amount of code over the years and I know uh you know what i want to see in terms of you know how i can make convenient function calls do i oh do i you know do i really have to um you know set up you know all of this uh you know this low end code just so that i can make certain high end calls i don't want to get too technical but um you know we try to anticipate those needs and get out in front of it for developers so uh, just in looking at some of the games within the marketplace here um obviously we saw a little bit there about uh Meta Rush in general. When you look at game devs back to this point and kind of the concept of what they're looking for in you know development, you guys kind of giving them almost like a all-in-one spot for them to develop their platforms. And you look at Web 2 to Web 3, this is, I guess, the question I have for you is when you look at Web 2 game developers, is this something that they're just starting to maybe trial? They want to do a little test? Or is it more, okay, there's a shift in their thought process of how, uh, what we mentioned earlier in the show, that there's this paradigm shift, that people are being developers are saying, this is really the next generation of where gaming is going. What are you seeing in working with all the devs that you guys have had a chance to? Um, I would say that the tip of the spear, um, certainly coming out of 2023 into 2024, has been... Um, game developers who uh they're they're fairly blockchain savvy that is to say you know and it has informed you know some of those uh game designs and things have been informed by you know some of the earlier uh attempts at uh blockchain that said um you know there is uh, a increasingly growing um uh world uh universe of um sort of crypto curious or uh, web3 curious traditional right. web2 developers and so um you know they of course are coming with a little bit of a jaundiced eye because you know for you know, for some amount of time they have uh their associations with web3 have you know i mean you talk about you know ponzi schemes or or things like that you know or you know paying millions of dollars for a 64 by 64 pixel image of an ape or something and you know what utility does it have and so you know they they come at it you know from a um you know a little bit more careful so it's definitely uh, a little bit more tenuous but um i think that with every cycle that we've been through so you know for example the last big wave really did um prove out that this is a viable space. And so then, you know, it pulled back a little bit. I mean, there was certainly this, uh, you know, what has come to be, you know, what was before referred to as sort of play to earn, uh, you know, which now have a little bit of a, uh, you know, the, some of those, some of that terminology sounds, it's got a little bit, a little old, a little tainted. And so now, you know, we're, um, you know, we pulled back, we validated that the, the space is viable. And so now, you know, we're focusing on things like, you know, NFT utility and game utility more right. than just, you know, inflating, you know, these big in inflatable tokens and things like that. So, um, so yeah, I think that uh, the curiosity on the part of the developers who were in the traditional space, and again, they also, they very jealously guard their space too. I, I need, I would want to point out, I mean, you know, you have these very, very loyal fan bases from these, you know, 20 plus year franchises and so they're you know they've been a little hesitant to see 
you know, some of them will see, uh, you know, some of the Web3 stuff as sort of polluting their space. But once they actually come to understand that, in fact, what we certainly here at Myria are trying to do is not cheapify anything, but actually um, just bring more more power to the to the players. <laughs> um, uh, in the sense that, um, you know, the, the economies, uh, you know, in the game are not actually that dissimilar to what it's not this big, scary thing. You know, I, you know, spent year or I mean, well, just a tremendous amount of hours, you know, grinding out my characters in different games and, and farming and things like that. And, you know, those economies translate really well to the Web3 space. I mean, assuming uh, as we do that we need to you know, keep a lid on some of the weird, you know, inflationary effects and things like that. But, um, but it's actually not nearly as uh, exotic as some people paint it. So they're, you yeah, know, I they think, are, they're coming on board. Yeah, I think that's the, one of the misnomers in Web3 Gaming, to your, your point, is that a lot of the game ecosystems from Web2 seem to translate really well over into Web3. I was looking at uh, DeFi Llama, this is on StarkNet, just looking at TVL, uh, the overall volume, and then also core developers. So core developers all the way back from 23 continue to see, to to grow here. What What is it that you feel you guys need to do to maybe see core developers really leap forward, especially as we see 2024 as being a major year for game development for Web3? What is it that would draw them in you know, from Maria's standpoint? Um, I think that, um, uh, it, I mean, you know, the, the different uh, size developers are, are sort of looking for different um, things. So, you know, smaller developers who don't actually have uh, the, uh, the internal knowledge about deploying smart contracts, writing solidity, getting things audited, you know, they right. want, you know, more of a, you know, a turnkey solution, whereas, um, you know, larger developers, you know, are more focused on our, you know, uh, our, our back end tooling and our community building uh, your infrastructure, the ability for them to, you know, rapidly, um, uh, you know, build, you know, create, deploy, manage, um, you know, sets of assets, which are, you know, have corresponding um, instantiations in their in their game. So, you know, maybe they have characters which are backed by NFTs and they want to be able to deploy those on, you know, easily onto a test net and, you know, have uh, see them go through the whole marketplace process. So um, I think that, you know, ease of tooling, ease of a workflow is something that, you know, you can never go wrong with providing to developers of any size. Um, you know, wallet functionality, um, the uh, demystification of you know what it means to you know to basically just talk to on ramp uh, and uh, on, onto the blockchain you know to bring your games into the web3 space so um you know i think from a uh, but it, again as i mentioned you know it is a um it is a process i mean i think that you know traditional gaming has become you know web2 gaming space has become quite mature and so as a result you know they as i mentioned before they sort of you know are protective they 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 guard what they've built. I mean, it's a huge industry. And so, you know, they are going to be a little bit more conservative, um, you know, as they as they move into the space. But, you know, um, if I might sort of quote uh, uh, Animal House, uh, you know, we as we have a or paraphrase, you know, as um, you know, blockchain gaming continues to have a long tradition of existence, then that will continue to add mm, sort of uh, legitimacy, you know, well, not that it wasn't legitimate before, but the perceived, you know, the perception that, you know, this is a real thing and it's here to stay. Um, yeah. And so the, you know, the, the bigger players will be more willing to, you know, get more and more involved. Yeah, I think when you talk about bigger players, I mean, you look at uh, just what, you know, Epic Games, of course, we, we still believe this is just a matter of time before we start to see some integrations there uh, with, especially <laughs> with Web3, I think just in the potential you know, and then uh, of course the success I think of what Off the Grid is going to be doing, uh, you know, with their play into Xbox, sure. now getting into consoles, all of that. And to your point is that we're seeing a slow burn here of Web two devs who are starting to say, "Hey, let's open up our eyes and maybe go the direction of Web three. It has opened up, I think, a lot of opportunity. We saw Avalanche; they had a huge presence over at uh, GDC. Uh, so all of the signs are kind of pointing to a big 2024. In your opinion, 
Do you think 2024 is the year for Web3 gaming to break out? Or do you think it's going to take maybe another year or two before we see real adoption from consumer gamers? I think that um, I think that 2024 is going to be big. I think that it will become more more entrenched. I think that you know in the the first uh, phase, you know it was you know a sort of a superficial um, integration. I think 2024 we'll see thing you know a, a deeper level of integration. But you know um, you know and so I mean I think that it will be uh, you know as you say we'll call it a slow burn, but I think it will be definitely vectoring up. I you know, these things are obviously cyclical, my own, um, you know, so we, you know, here at Myria are not only looking at 2024, you know, or the growth in 2024, which we, again, I mean, don't get me wrong, we are absolutely um, anticipating this to be a big year for us, but we're also looking to the next cycle, uh, you know, what happens in, in 2025, right. you know, or, you know, yeah. as, I mean, you just simply can't deny the existence of these dips and, and, um, and peaks. And so, um, you know, I think that, uh, 2024 is, you know, I think it's going to be a uh, a year of solidification and, um, yeah, I mean, vector, you know, vectoring upward. I would absolutely characterize it that way. Hey, listen, Andrew, it's been great having you on. Uh, thanks so much for giving us a little bit more insights on Maria. We appreciate you stopping in today. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. You have a great one. All right. All right, you guys, of course, are tuned in. Maybe uh, maybe over on the podcast side of things, make sure and jump over to the YouTube channel and get you know additional content here. We do some things over here that are a little bit more visual, so hopefully this is the place for you. Make sure and like and subscribe on this video. We'll at least start getting some of this content into your feed. And if you're not in our Diamond Circle, make sure and get in that. It's a great place to get additional content from us that doesn't make it here on the YouTube channel. Check me out there on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath. Thank <laughs> you.